I'll tell you why I'm excited in a short while, but welcome to this episode of People and Places here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Eche Atisu, and as you can tell, I'm not your regular host. I'm sitting in for Wanda Ami Hagan, and that's because we just ambushed an interesting guest who we are going to speak to shortly. Ibrahim Mama is an artist, not the Ibrahim Mama you know, not the brother of the former president of Ghana, no. This is Ibrahim Mahama, the artist. We're going to understand all the interesting bits about the person he is as Ibrahim Mahama. And we'll do that shortly. So how about you join us? Let's hear the story of this philanthropist, this amazing artist who sold Ghana to other parts of the world. And also, of course, placed Ghana also on the world's map. Welcome once again to this week's People and Places here on Ghana Web TV. Let's take you into the story now. So welcome again to People and Places here on Ghana Web TV. I'm going to read out something. This is a very, very interesting um, profile. It says third most influential African, owns six aircrafts from the sale of his artwork, is a founder and director for the Savannah Center for Contemporary Art Tamale, amongst others. Yeah. Ibrahim, is, are these all true about you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's such um, an interesting profile, short as it may yeah. seem like. Uh, and I'm standing, if I may say, in front of a billionaire. Oh. Is, that, is, that, is, that, is that a good uh, or an accurate description of the kind of person you are? Oh no, I, for me, I think wealth is about redistribution. Yeah. If you are able to make <clears throat> money off the living that you have, at least they should be able to influence the lives of other people. Yeah. So for me, it's always been very important to use, to rechannel the capital that I raised through my work in order to be able to create spaces that can influence at least a younger generation. So I think for me, that's where the wealth is in. Yeah. Mm. But is it true that you sold an artwork for a million dollars? Yeah, yeah, I've, even more like in the last couple of years because as artists we earn money through our work through different things. Either we're teaching abroad or we're uh, working on exhibition projects or we're producing commissions for museums around the world or things like that, yeah. But for me the question is how does that really reflect on the system mm. here, the creative art system? Okay. Yeah, so that's where for me the question is. If you have a million sitting in your bank account what does it do nothing you know but if you create an institution which can influence the next generation of let's say creatives or whatever then you're creating more wealth in the future so or even much greater wealth so for me that is where the the, the thing really lies you spoke about institutions and all that we'll, we'll come to a lot of all those things but your name ibrahim mahama are you not confused with the other ibrahim mahama that we know that's the brother of the former yeah. president of ghana have you ever had such encounters well, actually, interestingly enough, for the first time we met today. Oh, oh today? Just today. <laughs> just for the first time oh, we met. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, but... How, uh, did, how did that go for you, two Ibrahim Ames meeting? It was interesting. I think that he's one of the most generous people I've ever met. And uh, we had such beautiful conversation, you know. Mm. I don't necessarily think, you know, sometimes people always, yeah, people always confuse. I think the problem is that because he's known to be Ibrahim Mahama, the... Uh, brother of John Mahama and also like being rich a lot of people don't really take time to know him as a person the person that he is you know so today when I met him it wasn't so long but at least you really get a glimpse of someone in terms of their honesty and all that I thought it was actually quite interesting um, and people are always confused because I've traveled to places slept in hotels and all that and people who were working in the hotels thought I was <laughs> Mr. Ibrahim Mahama. And I always tell them, just call me Ibrahim Mahama. Okay. When you see him, you can call him Mr. Ibrahim Mahama. Well, we'll, we'll proceed yours or we'll just we'll add the artist part yes. to your name. You mentioned yeah. the other Ibrahim Mahama. We might get the opportunity to speak to him some yeah. other time. Yeah. But let's get to know yes. you. What's your story? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Who is Ibrahim Mahama, the artist? Yeah, well, it's such a simple story. I was born in Tamale okay. in 1987, June 20th. Okay. And uh, I come from a very big family. Uh, part of my family migrated to Accra to live uh, with my mom and my immediate siblings. And yeah, so from 1989, I guess, living in Accra, went to various schools, mostly Catholic schools. Um, secondary school, decided to do art. So went to Pope John Secondary. 
and then afterwards KNUST pursued art again so I was done I did painting and sculpture in the undergrad and I met some people that really influenced my thinking mm -hmm. like some of our professors caricature and so on and um, right after school I did my service at the autism center in Accra okay and after that I said during that period I said oh, I would really love to go back to school immediately you know just around the time that the government was beginning to cancel this idea of um, supporting students like the subsidy for students at the tertiary level uh, so when I started my master's the amount of money that we paid for the fee it was low it was I think my two years in KNUSD doing my master's if I could if I can accumulate everything at with the bursary and everything. I paid almost like $200 for my entire master's degree. Okay. Whereas people are paying like 100,000 in New York and other places. So for me, that was very important. And then subsequently decided to go and do my PhD. But between that time, I had an opportunity to do exhibitions in London and then that took off and then I we'll started. We'll get to, we'll yeah. get to London, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to all the other big places. You quickly mentioned the kind of upbringing yeah. and all that. Are you the kind of child that we can describe as having been born with a silver spoon, whether it was a golden spoon? I don't know what kind of spoon you were born in your mouth. Because <laughs> if we look at your life today, yeah. someone will wonder, are you one of those sport kids? You just mentioned we were born in Tamale, but are you one of those quote and unquote sport kids no would you consider yourself all, one not at all i was a very gentle kid actually very mm. relaxed um i wasn't wild as a child at all uh, yeah not at all so i the thing is that my father is such a strict man so you couldn't there was no child in our family that could be a sport child and also my father though when we we're growing up he was quite well to do but okay. he was also very interested in how he could take care of the, the general larger family so he would spend a lot of his money actually educating children like creating like supporting institutions and things like that and i think i learned quite a lot from that so uh, you can't be spoiled when you grow up in a family like that so for me i think i rather learned to be humble and modest from it that's interesting yeah. i know that you 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 have been able to learn a lot of these things like you just yeah. rightly said from your father yeah. um I, I just want to know how how does it feel like when um, you look back at your life and all the things that you might have learned, mm -hmm. the places you've been up to this point, do you think that there are any major or significant things about your growing up years that informed the kind of thing you do today? Well, I think my Kumasi, if I would say. When you were in university? In the university, okay. was the most significant point in my life. I will say that every time I talk, I always mention Kumasi because the kind of people that I met at the university, both professors and also colleagues, were so important and pivotal to my thinking. You know, you meet people who are thinking more about the future than the present, or people who are concerned about the past and thinking about how we can make informed decisions that can influence, let's say, the shape of the future and things like that. So Kumase, like in terms of studying, like in the Department of Painting and Sculpture, okay. and meeting people like uh, Kisi Edubuafo or Caricature or George Amprechum, Dorothy and others, or my colleagues Bernard Akwe Jackson and um, uh, Salom Kuji, who were very interested in theory or interested in new responsible ways of thinking or working. It's, that is one of the things that has been lost for a long time within the creative art industry okay. because sometimes people think it's all about talent. Oh, I can make good music, I can make hits, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it comes flat because if it cannot evolve the society and also allow for a lot more people coming into it to be responsible. Because we, you and I, if we belong to an industry, we should be able to take responsibility for it or to be able to do things that somehow reshape it. And for me, Kumasi was, Kumasi was a gift in a way. I don't know what would have happened. And maybe we have to thank Kwame Nkrumah for somehow uh, really believing us in that. Giving us KNUST. <laughs> yes, KNUST. <laughs> All right. The story about Ibrahim Ama is only starting now. We're yeah. going on a short break. Enam is going to bring us a segment we call Facts About Ghana. When we come back, we'll continue this story with Ibrahim Mahama, the artist. From the dawn of time, people have engaged in several businesses. With the onset of technology and innovation, life has relatively been made easier. By using debit or credit cards. Mobile banking. Thank you. And your favorite mobile money? Tech has indeed married business. 
On Bistec, we spend time with faces behind known and upcoming businesses in the country. Learn more about the new technologies and innovation. As well as find out about the trending issues in the world of business. Join us as we serve you with a variety of compelling interviews, projects and others right here on Ghana Web TV. And now, let's learn something interesting about Ghana. The first European settlement on the Gold Coast was the Portuguese in 1471. They came to the country purposely for increased trade and eventually acquired slaves and gold in trade for European goods such as metal knives and guns among others. That's all for this week on Facts About Ghana. Until next time, let's get back and learn more with Wanda and her guests. Welcome back from that short break. We're still here with our guest for this week's episode of People and Places here on Ghana Web TV. And I'm sitting in for your regular host, Wanda Ami Hagan. Our guest is Ibrahim Mahama. Ibrahim, yes. now let's get to understand your work. How long have you been doing art? Um, I think actively since 2014, like internationally but I was making art as a student at the university. That appears like a short time, but you've made such a huge impact in, in that short time. Yes, yeah, sometimes I even wonder, like when I look back into my, the trajectory of my work, it looks like I've been working for such a long time, but it's only been eight years now. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that first artwork you did? Yeah, yeah. Tell I, us about it. <laughs> well, when I was in secondary school, I was always very much interested in mm. like experimentation, things like that. So I remember I used to make these plaster casts of like uh, people's bodies, like faces or things like that. Later on at the university, that's what I would have developed. That's what I developed then onto like making these like huge public monuments and installations and things like that. It always felt so good to be able to produce a work of art that wasn't very conventional. Mm. At least within the context of Ghana, when you made a work like that, we're like, ah, but this thing, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but for me, that's, that was what was interesting, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was your first work? Yes. Today, you've sold how many artworks? Can you remember? I can't really recount, but there have been quite some good works that I've sold to museums, through my galleries and all that, museums around the world. Um, but, yeah, but then again, I also keep a greater part of the works that I produce as an artist because I would want the history and the legacy of my work mm -hmm. to be in this country so that these young people who are growing up and also children who are going to be born in the future wouldn't have to struggle too much to think about their, exactly. their work, the legacy of an artist's work outside his home country. Yeah. Okay, but how about that artwork? Because we're, you, you are known for the art. What was that artwork that put you on the global stage? In 2015, there is an, there's an art exhibition that happens in Venice every two years. It's called okay. the Venice Biennial. Uh, the Ghanaian architect, David Ajayi, who's working on the cathedral, he, uh, he was an architect working on that project at the time with a friend of his, Okwen Wezo, uh, who is this Nigerian curator, was based in uh, Munich. Uh, they had, that was the first time a black director had been invited to this exhibition. And it's like the World Cup. Ghana participated in it for the first time three years ago, which David Ajayi uh, uh, designed. And then we participated again this year with another architect uh, together with Nano Furiata. But it was very important, this exhibition, because when you normally show in an exhibition like this, it's like the World Cup. Yeah. Everyone comes to see the best art from around the world. And there I was, a young student from KNUST. I was okay. just barely finishing my master's oh, wow. and I've been invited. And normally you are invited to that exhibition when you're at the peak of your career or you're like, you're really doing something. But I was just a student and I was the first Ghanaian who living and working in Ghana invited to this exhibition of 120 years. Mm. So it was a big deal. And I went there and then I put up like the biggest artwork that had ever been shown in the exhibition. So everyone was like, ah, but who is this guy from Ghana? Blah, blah, blah. Like he came out from nowhere. That, so it was from then, it just, yeah. Skyrocketed. Yeah, skyrocketed. Yeah. And that artwork was which particular one? What was the name of that artwork? The title of the work was called Out of Bounds. Out it of Bounds. It was actually inspired by a work that I did in Kumasi at the railway uh, between, you know, the old Edum, uh, the police station. There's this old uh, colonial bridge there. Okay. And then the, uh, the urban roads also built a new one, I think, mm. with the Turkish government. 
So I wrapped those two uh, in these jute sacks that I, uh, I was working on in the beginning. And uh, at the, uh, at the, on the new bridge, they had written all these signs, out of bounds, out of bounds. And I thought that's a really beautiful title to use for this project in Italy, together with a book we published at the time with a friend of mine, Ose Bonsu. So we just took the idea from uh, Kumasi, out of bounds from and the And all market, the way to Venice. And then all the way to Venice. And then that was what my career started from. It's interesting. You have, you have a unique choice for the materials you use for your artwork. Why do you go for things that are almost sport? You go for <laughs> sack bags, jute yeah. bags. What's that motivation? Because they are important things. They hold a lot of memory. We live in a society where people are very easy to discard things, you know. Oh, you feel something is old, let's throw it away. Or oh, this building is old, let's break it down and let's build a new one. But you forget that there are histories. As people are, buildings and objects also accumulate history. And um, it can, you can transfer that history from a building to people. Okay. You know, so for me, I've always thought that it's important. So when I look for things, I want things that actually have certain histories that we can all go back and learn from. Or be able to at least use in a very different way. So that's just the shot of it. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, I want us to know you are a young man, no doubt about yeah. that. How many other young people and how are you inspiring or motivating other young people to follow in the kind of things or the artwork that you do? Well, I try. I try to motivate and inspire other artists or mentor them from the university and also around. I always get emails and calls from artists younger who are working on project things. So I, how did you do this? Like, what can we do differently? Because of the way I think mm -hmm. and work. Um, through the institution in Tamale, I've also employed younger artists to work with, so that we, at least in thinking, because there are people who maybe studied in the same, from the same place that you came, came from. In the thinking, you want to be able to produce something that also can expand all of us, our collective thinking and things like that. Um, the institution was also uh, focused on like uh, inspiring young people. So for instance, in the last two days, there's a young Ghanaian uh, female pilot. Her name is Audrey Watson. She flies okay. for Passion Air. Uh, she came to Tamale for a break and then uh, she was staying with us within the institution. And then we organized a workshop where we brought in students from high school, from primary schools and all that, where she spoke to them about her work as a pilot. We even went into the aircraft and then she showed them how the instruments work and things like okay. that. And aside that also, we go out of our way to fund buses that goes to communities and brings young people to the institutions for workshops, drone classes and all kinds of robotics and all kinds of other things. It's really important that the work that we do helps to transform, let's say, the, like the, the, the ideological mindset, values, yeah. mindset of another generation. That's the only way we can change this country for good. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm asking this question for some of my colleagues yeah. in the newsroom. The ladies, more yes. especially. <laughs> they want to know, are you married? <laughs> <laughs> you What's your I family love? life like? <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing like a killer right now. <laughs> I tell us, are you married? <laughs> Not you? yet, but now I'm going to get married. I think next year, the beginning of next year, I will get married. Is it pressure? No, it's not pressure. Okay. I met someone that oh, nice. I really like, uh, that I think that I'm going to settle with. So, I yeah, I think it has to happen because at some point, what's all of this work for? Exactly. Yeah, if you can share it with someone. And also, you know, the idea of being in a relationship is a struggle. Yeah, so for me, for a long time, I'd always put more energy into and my And especially work. for you, travel around yes. a lot. Exactly. exactly. So having made this choice must have been... Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy one, <laughs> but then it's a necessary one. Okay. And it's an important one that should have happened a long time ago. Yeah, we are old men, come on. We shouldn't be, <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be doing this at this point in time. You don't want to be 40 years old and now have children, you know. Yeah, so for me, it's very important that we do that. Because when you have... When you also have children, when you, when you put yourself in a family way and you have children, you can also inspire them because mm -hmm. if you're thinking and working within a certain manner, it means that you could also, even if you're adopting children or whatever, you can inspire, you can have someone close to you that you can somehow inspire one day that can also think. It doesn't mean they come to inherit your work or anything, but at least there are people who can be close to you that you can also influence. So I think it's very important that we, we, we do Before this. we let you go, yeah. Tell us what you think about the future. What, what do you think we can be doing to help yeah. the arts industry personally? And then for every one of us, what do you think we can all do to contribute to that? <laughs> well, I think it's, we have to take responsibility, uh, simply. Mm. 
because there are a lot of people within the industry who like to point fingers, like say, oh, but this is not happening, that is not happening. But you look at their work and realize that, oh, they are, they are living and doing well from their work. So it's more or less about you realizing the significant potentials that exist within the industry. First, from within ourselves, okay. as practitioners within the industry. Of course, there are a lot of people who don't have the opportunity to be able to earn as other people do within the industry. But once you earn a certain amount, I think that you should also think about how that earning can go a long way to influence or open up the industry. And secondly also, I think it's also to the government and to the states because they also have a greater part to play within this responsibility. I think there's so much rhetoric and sometimes when a lot of young people uh, take up roles to be responsible and do things, it sometimes rather feels like we're rather being punished yeah, than being paid attention to and things like that. So it's very important that the government also is sensitive enough to realize the significant work that is being done by people around and then contribute to it and also create a forum like a stake like a young people's forum where people can contribute ideas because at the end of the day we are the ones who are going to inherit the future mm -hmm. so what use is it if we cannot make any inputs into it or design things that would be beneficial to us and also those that come after us so we all have a role to play honestly and we just have to learn to do it honestly and also with some sense of dignity. Ibrahim, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And this was this was just an ambushing of <laughs> Ibrahim and we are glad that at least he's been able to share yeah. some of his um, life skills, his life experiences with us. So thank you once again oh, thank you for joining much. us. And this yeah. has been People and Places here on Ghana Web TV. I've, not, I'm, I've just been sitting in for your regular host, Wanda Mihei Gan. You can always catch more of our uh, news and other stuff on Ghana Web when you visit www.ghanaweb.com. Until the next episode, be safe. Thank you.